Here's where we left off yesterday. We left off by graphing, um, here are some exponentials. This one's exponential base 2 with some horizontal and vertical flips going on. This one right here is exponential base 2. It's been vertically flipped, and then it's been moved to the right one and up 2. And remember, it's always a good idea to draw the horizontal asymptote along with those three key points where the bend happens to make sure that you get the shape right. Um, here is exponential base E. E is the natural number. It's about 2.71. It's a number that you're going to see repeatedly over the next couple of years, and even more if you go on and take uh, math and engineering classes and stuff like that. It's amazing where this number comes up, and it's amazing some of the properties that it has. So it's a, it's a really cool exponential. So here we did exponential base E with a horizontal flip, and then we moved it up one unit. And then this was exponential base one-third, which could also be thought of this way. We could think of this as 3 to the negative x. Because if I take one-third and do the reciprocal, that would be 3 to the negative 1 raised to the x. Power to a power, I'd multiply those. So this graph right here is the same as, if I remember correctly, there it is right there. That is the exact same graph. So another way to do this graph would be to think of it as one-third raised to the x. Okay? And I kind of like having it in this format because then I know it goes through these three points. This is where the bend happens. Whatever the base is, whether it's a number between 0 and 1 or bigger than 1, it always goes through negative 1, 1 over the base, the reciprocal of the base, 0, 1, and then 1, comma, whatever the base is. Okay? So hopefully you looked at those. Uh, if not, you can watch the video again. Um, the the problems in this section, they're not designed to be too terribly difficult. They're kind of just designed to get your feet wet a little bit. Okay? So now let's talk about um, an application of, of uh, exponential functions. And so we're going to talk about interest, compound interest. <clears throat> so you've probably heard of interest before interest payments, interest on a loan, interest on a bank account, stuff like that. Um, interest is just a fact of life. Okay? I'm, uh, well, I'm not sure there's anybody who lives in the modern world um, and has money or earns money that doesn't have something to do with interest. Okay? So let's talk about what interest is. Um, interest is the amount of money paid for the privilege of borrowing Borrowing money. So interest works in a couple of different ways. If you put money in a bank account, the bank is going to pay you interest. Right now, they're not going to pay you. <clears throat> pardon me. They're not going to pay you very much interest at all. It's a tiny, tiny amount. Most savings account right now, uh, they're probably around a tenth of a percent of interest per year. I mean, it's a tiny, tiny amount. Okay. But what the bank is saying is, look, if you lend us your money. If we borrow your money from you, we're going to pay you a little bit of money for that privilege. Okay? So it's good when you lend somebody money. If you lend them $100, maybe they pay you back $105 or something like that. So that $5 is the privilege of borrowing money from you. Okay? That's the interest that they're going to pay you. What happens most of the time for most of us is we end up borrowing money. We need to borrow some money to buy a car. We need to borrow some money to buy a house, something like that. Or maybe we borrow some money to go to school. Okay? In order to have use of that money now, we pay them more money back later. So we pay them everything that they're due plus some on top of that. And that, that amount of money that we, that we pay is called interest. Okay? So let's, uh, let's do this right here. This is the principle, and I still need to look this up. I think this word is X. I think I used the wrong one. I think it's PLE, but we'll check and see. Okay? So it, the word that we use in, in finance is principle. That's the original amount borrowed or invested. So if we put $1,000 in a stock fund, we'd call that the principal. Okay? And then hopefully we earn interest. If we borrow $1,000 for a car, that would be called the principal. Okay? And then we have the rate, which we usually use a lowercase r for that. And that's short for percentage rate. Okay? And when we use percents in problems, we always enter them in as a decimal. Okay. Now, the simplest type of interest has kind of a unique name. It's called simple interest. Okay. 
and you may be familiar with this, the, the formula for simple interest is I for interest. So the interest that you pay based off simple interest is P times R times T. It's just based on the principal that you borrowed, the interest rate you borrowed it at, and how much time you had that borrowed for. Okay. Now, with simple interest, the only thing that happens is you borrow that money, it accrues interest, and you pay that interest, or they pay you interest at the very end of the term. Okay, And the end of the term is whatever the set agreed amount of time is. So if you're going to lend it to somebody for two years, the term would be two years. Okay, So I've got a situation right here. It says $1,000 and put in an account bearing simple interest of 8% per annum. Anybody know what per annum means? Per year. Okay, 8% per year for 50 years. So let's say we get $1,000 from Grandma for Christmas because she's on her way out and she wants to make sure all her grandkids are taken care of. So she gives you $1,000 and you think, you know what? I don't need 1000 bucks. Yeah, I could spend it on something, but I want to save for retirement. Okay, you guys are around 16 years old. Maybe you retire around 66 years old. So about 50 years from now. Let's put that $1,000 away and let's see how much it grows to. Okay? So if it was just simple interest, okay, and we're going to change this to a more realistic scenario in just a second. If this was just simple interest, here's, how, here's what we do. The interest in the account at the end of those 50 years is going to be the principal, 1,000, times the interest rate. What's our interest rate? 8%, so 0 0.08. Remember, we use it as a decimal. And how much time? 50 years, so times by 50. Now, if you throw that into your calculator, go ahead and do that. 1,000 times 0 0.08 times 50. Well, this is pretty cool. How much money is that? $4,000. So we earn $4,000 in interest. Okay? So the next question is, after 50 years, how much money is in the account? We put $1,000 in there ourselves to begin with. And then at the end of 50 years, the bank says, hey, you know what? We need to pay them the interest that they're due because they're going to withdraw this money. How much is in there the day we go to withdraw it? $5,000 total. Okay? Because what we have to do is we have to take the original amount, the original principal, 100% of what we put in there, plus all that interest. So we end up with 5000 bucks. So $1,000 over 50 years turned into 5000 bucks. Does that sound pretty good? Well, let's see. I, I wouldn't be too thrilled about that. Okay. Um, let's see if we can make that a little bit better. So in order to make that a little bit better, we're going to develop the compound interest formula. Okay. Now here's how it works. The first thing we want to do is, in order to come up with that $5,000 figure, I had to go physically find out how much interest. Then I had to come back and add it to the $1,000 that was in there to begin with. Let's see if we can come up with a formula for that. So the formula for that would be the amount in the account would be the principal that I put in there to begin with plus the interest. So the amount would have been the principal that I had in there to begin with plus the simple interest. And the simple interest was P R T. Now that formula looks just fine, but let's do this. Let's make it look a little bit better. There's a P in each one of those terms, so I'm going to factor out a P. And I'm going to end up with 1 plus R T. Good there. Okay, now, oops, let me do this so it doesn't look like I'm dividing or anything. I'm going to change colors here. And it asks a specific question. How about after just one year? So if I put 50 in here, that would tell me how much there is after 50 years. But let's say I just wanted a formula that will tell me how much is in the account after one year. Well, what would, what would the T change to? What does T stand for anyway? Time. Okay. So that means I'm going to put a 1 in for T. So that means the account amount in the account after one year is P and then 1 plus R. Now let's talk about why these are in there. This 1 is just the number 1. That R is a percentage rate as a decimal. So this is a percent. What if we talked about 1 as a percent? What is 1 as a percent? What does it represent? I hear it. 1 means 100%. So here's what this means. I get 100% of that principal plus a little bit of interest. 100% plus 8% interest. 
and that will tell me how much is in the account after one year. Does that make sense? So if I put in a hundred dollars after one year, they'd pay me eight. They'd pay me a hundred percent of what was in there, plus eight percent. What's eight percent of a thousand? Eight percent of a thousand. Of means multiply. So 0 0.08 times a thousand. No, that'd be 80 percent. It's eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. They pay us eighty dollars. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about compound interest. Compound interest is very different than simple interest. Okay, Simple interest, just like it says, is very simple. The calculations for compound interest are slightly more difficult, but they are well worth it. So let's take a look. Compounding is a fancy words, word that means interest is paid and added to the account at set intervals of time. So every so often they're going to say, hey, you know what? They've had that $1,000 in our bank for a year. We ought to pay them a little bit of interest. So they put that money in there. And then after a year or two, they say, you know what? That's sitting in there. We ought to pay them their interest. They put it in there. Okay. So the key here is that interest is paid and it's added to the account while it's still earning interest. So they're putting money in there. The amount of our principal is growing. So we're getting interest added upon interest. Okay. So let's see what happens. We're going to go through and make this calculation. We're going to come up with this formula. Okay, $1,000 is put in an account, 8% interest compounded annually, just once a year. So at the end of every year, instead of at the end of 50 years, at the end of every year, they're going to give us some interest and they're going to put it in the account. Okay. So it says compute the amount at that time. So if T equals zero, that's like day one. We just barely put the money in the account. How much is in there? thousand dollars so we got a thousand dollars right here now if I want to compute what it is after the next year this is the formula we're going to use right here so the amount is going to be the principal one thousand one plus what's the interest rate in this case eight percent right so plus point oh eight you with me there Okay, now I'm going to change colors and I'm going to write this down here. Would you throw this into your calculator? What is 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08? We just talked about it. You might be able to do it in your head. 1080, okay? So we've got $1,080. Here I had $1,000 to start with. So I went from $1,000 to $1,080. So they paid us $80 in interest. This is the amount in the account. Okay, now watch very carefully on this one right here. On year two, we had a certain amount in the account, and then we have to multiply it by 100% of what was in there plus another 8%. What was in there during the second year? How much was in there? 1080, or I'm going to write it like this. Everybody watch, please. This is how much was in there for year two, just like this is how much was in there for year one. So I'm going to write 1,000 and then 1 plus 0.08, okay? That's how much was in there for that year, and there's the interest that we're going to pay it. Now, if I do this calculation, go ahead and throw that into your calculator. What's 1,000 times 1 plus 0.08 times 1 plus 0.08? Now, if you had to take a guess, what would you guess it is? Yeah, another, another $80 is what you'd guess, right? Go ahead and throw it in there. Another eighty dollars would put us at 1160. What is it? 1166.40. Okay. So a little more money than we were expecting. We got an extra six dollars and forty cents. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to write down. Here's how much was in there to begin with, and then I have to multiply it by that 1 plus 0 0.08 for that year. So during year, year 3, all of this was sitting in there. So that's 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08, 1 plus 0 0.08. Yeah. Wow. Well, that sounds good. So here's, here's Noah's suggestion. This is a little bit silly to continue writing this out like this. Okay. So how about we write this as 1,001 plus 0.08 raised to the third. 
And how about we write this as 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the second. And this would be 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the first. Okay? Now, if I figure out what number that is, again, it's not going to be another $80, and it's not going to be $86 that we got here. Let's take a look at what we've got here. What did you get, Logan? Okay. So it's even more than that. It's more than $86. If you do the computation right here, uh, let's see, what do we end up with? It's almost, I mean, it's uh, $95 or so. We get even more. So we got $80, then $86, then about $95. I mean, we keep getting more and more interest. So a general formula for, comp for yearly compounding would be this. The amount in the account is going to be the principal, 1 plus the rate, raised to what? Raised to the T. So for this problem, after 50 years, we could figure it out by doing this. 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the 50. Now, throw that in your calculator. Same $1,000 that Grandma gave us. Same account at 8%, except for this time, they're going to pay us interest every year. They're just going to add a little bit every year. 80 bucks ish for the first little while. Noah. Nine hundred one point sixty one. Okay, now if you were happy with five thousand at the end of fifty years, how happy would you be with forty seven thousand dollars? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. That little act of paying interest one time per year, 50 times, a little bit of the money added to the account, a little bit of the money added to the account, it turns into what we call exponential growth. Okay? So it goes up and up and up and up and up and up, and then, then it really starts to get steep. We get huge, huge increases. Okay? Um, what if we said, you know what, I'm going to work until I'm 76. I'm going to give it 60 years. What would I need to change about this calculation? Put in a 60. Throw in a 60, and guess what happens over those next 10 years? What is it? Okay, so about 101,000. Okay? Huge. I mean, it, it more than doubled in those last 10 years. Okay? So compounding has a huge effect. So this formula that we came up with right here is a very useful one, but that's just for yearly compounding. So go ahead and flip the page over and let's take a look at this. We need to make a little adjustment because most accounts will not pay you interest every year. They usually pay you interest more often than that. If you have a savings account, a lot of times it will be quarterly or it will be monthly. They'll pay you even more often. Okay, now, if we did something quarterly, and it was 8%. Quarterly interest is how many times per year? Four times per year. Are they going to pay us eight, the full 8% four times a year? No, that would be 32% every year. That would be awesome, but that's not what they're going to do. So we need to make a little adjustment. We're still going to have the principal out here. We're still going to have the one there because we get 100% of our money back. Then we're going to take the interest rate and we're going to do this. We're going to divide by n. n is going to be the number of times that it compounds per year. So if this was 8 and this was 4, they're only going to pay us 2% each quarter. 2% first quarter, 2% second quarter, 2% third quarter, 2% fourth quarter. There's the 8% altogether. They just divided it up into four equal pieces. Make sense? Okay. But if they divide it up, we have to keep track of how many times they paid us interest. So time is going to go right here, but we're also going to multiply that by n. So less interest, but they pay us that interest more often. So divide the rate by n and times the time by n. So let's stick with this $1,000 problem for 50 years at 8%. And let's compute the compound interest if it were compounded quarterly. 
So the formula is right here, and this is one that you want to keep track of. They use this one in, in Math 1010 all the time. If it's quarterly, then n is 4. Now, stop for just a second. If you were paid interest four times per year for 50 years, how many times would you have been paid interest? 200, right? Because four times per year for 50 years is 200 times. Let's see if that number crops up here. So I get A equals 1,000, and then this is going to be 1 plus 0 0.08 over 4 raised to the 4 times 50. Now, I'm going to grab my calculator, and I'm going to type this in so we can see what the calculations are. So this is 1,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4, and then I raise that to the 4 times 50. That exponent is 4 times 50. We've got to put that in parentheses. So it's the whole exponent. $52,000. So instead of paying every year, if they pay us every quarter, every three months, um, 52, 484, what was it? 48? 98? 89. Way off. 90 if we rounded right. Okay? That's pretty good. Under the old scenario, per year we got 47. Now we got 52. We got over $5,000 more if they'll just pay us interest every every three months. What about monthly? What would n be then? N would be 12. So let's put that into the formula. Okay. So that would be 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12, and then 12 times 50. So the cool thing about this is if you've got a graphing calculator, you can come up here and you can just edit some things. So I'm going to put in a 12. So I'm just going to insert that. Oops. And insert that. Okay. And then I'm going to change that to a oops, insert parentheses 1, 2. And then I'm going to delete that. Okay. Have I got it in there right? Okay, if I got $5,000, $5,500 more by compounding quarterly, you think this is going to make a big difference? Yeah. No, because it, it knows the order of operations. It's going to do division before addition. If you wanted to put parentheses around there, you could. You'd get the same thing. So 53878. Uh, Point eighteen. So a little more money, but we compounded a heck of a lot more, 12 times per year rather than 4 times per year. The big leap happens when we compound. Compounding yearly, we went from $5,000 to $47,000. A little bit more of a leap here. What about daily? What would end be then? 365. Now, I'm going to count on somebody to plug that in correctly. Double check with your neighbor. You go ahead and plug that in, n would be 365, so we're going to have 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.08. Um, we are dividing the interest rate by 365. We're, we're adding a tiny, tiny amount of interest every day, but we're doing it 365 times a year for 50 years. We're doing it a ton of times. And if you type that in, what do you end up with? Point two. Okay. All right. So it made a difference. That's another seven hundred dollars or so. But again, the big leap is when we start compounding per year, maybe compounding quarterly. We get small increases after that. Okay. And we could get really ridiculous. You could figure out how many hours there are in a year. That would be kind of crazy. If somebody wants to figure that out, you're welcome. But the point we're after is. If we could do this all the time, in other words, on a continual basis, that would probably pay us the most. We can't get any better than changing, adding interest all the time, a minuscule amount of interest all the time. So that's something that we call continuous compound interest. And oddly enough, the formula for this is actually relatively easy. And look at this. It's P E to the RT. It's got that natural number E in it. It is an exponential base E. So, better than compounding hourly would be compounding continuously, all the time. 
every single millisecond, basically. Okay, so that's going to be whoops. The amount in the account is going to be the principal, one thousand e to the point zero eight times fifty. So we'll grab our calculator. We'll type that in. So here's one thousand. Most calculators have an e button or an exponential base e. For me, it's right there. It's next to the four. It's by the ln. Okay, and then this is point zero eight times fifty, and it doesn't get any better than this. 54,598.15. 54,598.15. So, if you could put $1,000 in an account, then the only type of account that changes on a continual basis would be things like stocks. Unfortunately, what's the problem with a stock fund? It goes down too. Okay? It's not guaranteed to go up at 8% all the time. Okay? You probably would have a very hard time finding an account that would go change continuously for 50 years at 8%. Okay? You can find things that do that on average, okay? And you'd be fine. All right? Okay, any questions? Okay. Um, let's do the, the last uh, couple problems here. And then we'll get started on 3.2, but just a little bit. I'll kind of just introduce the idea, get that idea cooking, and then we'll finish it up on uh, on Monday. So example 10 says you borrowed uh, $2,135 from your parents to buy a car. Uh, they want you to learn some valuable uh, lessons about money, so they charge you interest. But it's a pretty low interest rate. They're only going to charge you 4.75%, and it's going to be compounded monthly. And they tell you you don't have to make any payments either, which is very rare on a loan. Usually they want to start getting their money back right away. Okay. Um, so you just need to pay them back in two and a half years. How much money do you need to pay them? So we borrowed $2,135. There's the principal. At this interest rate, how much time? Okay, so two and a half years. So what would I use for T here? 2.5, okay? And it says compounded monthly. So that means N is 12. So here's our principal, there's our rate, there's our N, there's our T. This is not compounded continuously. They didn't use that word continuous. So it's going to be this formula right here. P, 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. So the amount that we have to pay them back is, we've got to pay them all of that 2135, 100% of that, 0 0.0475 divided by 12. So not very much interest on a monthly basis, but we've got to do that for two and a half years. If you paid interest every month, or accrued interest every month, for two and a half years, how many months are there in two and a half years? Two and 24, another half a year, so it would be 30. Guess what 2.5 times 12 is? 30. Okay, that exponent is how many times we have to uh, accrue interest. So if we type that in, what do we get? 2,000 what? 403.65. Okay. 64? Okay. Hey. Okay. Okay, so is that a good deal for us? Yeah, I suppose it depends on who your parents are. How much interest did we owe them? That's uh, what, two, $270 or so? 268.63. Okay, that's how much interest we paid them. So if you could borrow that much money, have complete use of it, not have to pay them back a dime, is that a pretty good deal? You got your car for two and a half years and you didn't have to pay for it till the very end. Okay, That's a pretty good deal. Okay? Especially if your parents want you to understand. Uh, I mean, things in life are not free. If you borrow money, you're going to pay for it. Okay? In 1050, we do a, a project on buying a house. And we find out how expensive it is to buy a house and how much uh, interest you pay over the years for, for buying a house. 
Um, this is a problem from your assignment or very much like your assignment. So let's take a look at this and just see if we understand it. Yeah, there are a lot of words there. So let's take a look. It says Q is in grams and T is in years. Q is in grams and T is in years. So Q grams, uh, quantity, quantity of grams, the amount, okay? And then it has 10 and 1 half raised to the T over 5730. And it says that represents the mass of carbon-14 present after T years. It says determine by looking at the function what shape the graph would have. So this, has a, this is an exponential with a base of 1 half. Or if we wanted to write it this way, I could write it 10, and then I could write this as 2 to the negative 1 raised to the T over 5730. Power to a power, I could write it this way, 10 and then 2 raised to the negative t over 5730. Well, if that is an exponential base 2 and the exponent is negative, would it grow like this? Because they all have a horizontal asymptote. Would it run along that horizontal asymptote and go up? Or would it run along that horizontal asymptote and go down? It's going to go down because that negative there is a horizontal flip, right? So it's going to go from this it's going to flip it over here, and it's going to start big and get small. So this is going to this is going to have a shape like this. Can anybody tell me where it crosses the y-axis, or in this case, the q-axis? What do you plug in to get the y-intercept? Zero. As ugly as this is, what if you plug in a zero? What's the base raised to the 0? A 1. And then we times it by 10. So this starts at 10 and goes down. All right? Then it says, what is the initial amount of carbon-14? What is the initial amount? What was the amount when we started this? 10. Plug in a 0. That's the answer right there. Okay? So we'd say 10 grams. What is the quantity present after 5,730 years? So what do you think we'd do here? Plug in 5,730. Now, um, watch, please. You don't need a calculator for this. 5,730 over 5,730. That's a 1, right? What's 1 half raised to the 1? 1 half. What's half of 10? Five. Five grams. Okay? This is what we call a half-life problem. This is an exponential change problem. And what's happening here is this radioactive substance is decaying. Okay? This is how they carbon date things. Okay? So after 5,700 years, half of it has decayed into some harmless substance. Carbon-14 is harmless to begin with, by the way. Okay? What if we let 11,460 years go by? Well, then the amount would be 10, whoops, 10, and then 1 half raised to the 11,460 over 5,730. And what does 11,460 have to do with 5,730? It's twice as much, right? Now, let's stop and think about this for just a second. If I let 10 years go by and half of it disappears, so 5 grams disappeared, 5 grams decayed away, if I let another 5,700 years go by, shouldn't it be zero? Not in this case. That's not the way exponential decay works. The amount of decay re is related to the amount present. That is the, the interesting nature of exponential decay. So if I do 1 half squared, that's 1 fourth. 10 divided by 4, this is 2.5 grams. Half of what it was 5,700 years ago. Or, yeah, 5,730. Okay? What quantity will be present after 2,000 years? How would we find that out? What's that? Plug in 2,000. So I'm going to find Q of 2,000. Q of 2,000. Now, you should be able to guess roughly what it's going to be. Um, here I let 5,700 years go by, and it went down to 5. If 0 years go by, it's 10. We're talking 2,000 years. 
somewhere between 5 and 10. 7, 8, somewhere around there. So if I go ahead and plug that in, we've got 10, we've got 1 half. This is going to be 2,000 divided by 57.30. You type that into your calculator, what do you get? What is it? 7.85. So 7.85 grams. Okay. And then it says, sketch the graph and label a few points. Sketch the graph and label a few points. Well, let's see. Don't I have a few points? Is, is the answer to this one a point? Yeah, come out here to this point right here, and let's say I let 5,730 years go by, and there's five left. If I let 11,460 years go by, there's 2.5 left. And the last question is, what do you notice about the quantity as time goes by? What's happening to the quantity? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Will it ever actually equal zero? No, because this is exponential. It's going to go out there and it's going to level off on an asymptote. It's going to get ridiculously close to zero, but it's never actually going to equal zero. Okay? Seems a little weird that way. Okay? Would it get to be effectively zero? It could, but it would take a heck of a long time for that to happen. Any questions? Okay.